Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're having fun with Mitch Rochelle and Andy Warren with PwC. We're talking about the Emerging Trends in Real Estate Report 2017. We're at number three now, <laughs> transformation through location choice. What does that mean? That's the kind of the crossroads of real estate development and community service. And a number of executives, whether it's related to the tech industry or financial industries, they want to locate somewhere where they can do good in the community. And in the report, we kind of detail two examples, Detroit and Las Vegas, where uh, executives in these companies went into more distressed areas, put their headquarters there, move people in, put new developments. And when you do that, they kind of go in initially and they have to provide all the services for their employees around there because there just isn't anything available at that time. Well, if it works, things backfill around it and it just creates a vibrant neighborhood around that existing location. And it kind of builds on itself. The example of Detroit, more investment flowing in all the time. And I think everyone can think about their individual market and think of a development that did that on either a large scale or a small scale. Yeah, I think it's also, you hear some developers come in and buy a bunch of properties in an mm-hmm. area and start really improving the area themselves, yeah. right? Yeah, well, and so some of it's led by the real estate developers. Some of it's led by the users. Mm -hmm. Um, So we actually try to coin a new phrase. I talked about in the last segment, coining uh, 18-hour city. We we all know about the three Ps, public-private partnership. We try to add a fourth P and add philanthropy to it. Because in some cases, it revolves around an area that has been reclaimed and made permanent open space. So you'll see family foundations and trusts buy some park or something like that and make that a centerpiece and then a development ends up coming around it because the park becomes vital to uh, having a place for the community to meet and so forth. So we've seen that in the residential space, but in the commercial space, it you know whether it be downtown Las, Las Vegas mm-hmm. or downtown Detroit, Detroit downtown sort of felt like it was left for dead and a couple of developers and people who own businesses really made a big financial commitment to rebuilding it. So um, that is uh, partially profit, but there's some philanthropy and altruism that goes on there too. Okay, and we're talking about the top 10 trends from the report, Merging Trends in Real Estate from ULI and PwC. And we're now at number four, recognizing the role of the small entrepreneurial developer so uh, I'll give you a, a data point um, there are 90 plus percent of the developers that are out there have 25 employees or 25 employees or less so th- when when I think of real estate developer I think of really the, the the reality is that they're these big behemoth organizations but the fact of the matter most of the developers are small local players if you look at a pie chart of the number of employees by developer, it's all over the place, right? It's, it's sort of evenly split based upon organization size. But when you think about it, um, most of them are small. So the dynamics we're seeing in the marketplace, um, hard to get financing, um, not a lot of equity um, for projects, it's because the lion's share of the developers are small operators, which to go to my earlier point, is preventing the bubble from re- getting reinflated because there's not a lot of other people's money in there. A lot of, in the past cycles when we've inflated bubbles, we've inflated them with other people's money. And here the developers have skin in the game. The lending standards require them to have skin in the game. So they're developing very slowly, very cautiously, and that's why we're not creating excess supply. And they understand the market, right? That's, they're very local. Yeah. Yeah. To give them a shout out, they understand the market better and are kind of dictating what's going on. They're, they're the ones that pull back first when they see a market maybe getting to that edge. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's a a trend we're going to continue seeing. So let's get to number five, labor scarcity and construction costs. That's a big trend, isn't it? It is is a trend. When you look at the number of jobs that we lost in the construction industry after the global financial crisis, and we've seen the real estate market come back, both commercial and residential, but the number of construction jobs added has not rebounded uh, in the same level of uh, activity. And as we talked to people, that was a number one concern was shortage of labor to be able to get projects done. And it's pushing out timelines, it's pushing up costs, and it's not just the uh, day-to-day laborer, it's uh, supervisors. A lot of those supervisors left, they've got other jobs now, they call them up and say, can you come back? And they go, 
I kind of like what I'm doing now. It's a little more stable. I'm not out in the hot sun. And so I think as we look going forward, we need to find a solution for this. And I will talk about in a little bit about, you know, kind of one of our best bets relates to construction and how to meet that need. One of the challenges, well, Andy touched on it, we've repurposed folks that are part of the uh, service chain in the construction industry. They're now doing something else and you can't, there's no way in that time frame to retrain that supervisor and no one wants an unsupervised project. The other thing that's happening is just, it's cost, right? So su supply and demand of talent, if the talent isn't there and you're trying to convince that person to leave their job doing something, something else, else and go back to construction, you're gonna pay more. So the entire scale of construction cost has just gone up and that's gonna have an impact on real estate valuations a bit. Yeah, and I guess that works back to, to one of your other trends that uh, maybe we'll have a longer cycle, that maybe there's less new supply, right, when the replacement cost goes up. You can't build it. What's interesting is, and I know you have a lot of appraisers that are, are lis listeners, but what's happening, which is kind of neat, um, the cost approach to value, I'm not talking about in terms of writing an appraisal, but just thinking about real estate from a cost approach, the cost approach is going up replacement cost from the labor side is considerably higher than it was in the past. Um, and simultaneously, you have prices getting uh, going up because of yield compression. So we have two forces that are independent of one another that are driving prices up. But the fact that construction costs are going up, um, and that seems to be not a cyclical thing, but a bit of a secular thing, that that is going to have a long-term impact on real estate. And, and just think about it, it's not just building the new building, it's also tenant improvements, right? You, you still need construction costs to build that space. So whatever we're baking into our underwriting in terms of how much TI allowance we're going to give or whatever tenants think about about how much TI spend they're, they're going to have, the cost may be higher because the construction costs go up, which loops back to an earlier trend that we talked about, which is optionality. Yeah. Because how else uh, can you sort of temper some of that cost by coming up with creative ways to use the space? So how long do you think this labor issue is going to last? I mean, certainly we've had a boom in construction in some of the, the major markets, mm -hmm. uh, but is that going to level off a little bit or how long term do people think this uh, labor shortage and, and higher labor cost is or are we just just there now it's trying to get them back that you're just going to pay them it's it's and mitch and i have this conversation all the time it's not so much well, our conversations people. are fascinating, <laughs> <They're> fascinating. <laughs> this is what we're, we're talking, talking about uh, we're talking about you know it's not so much the lack of people the labor force is shrinking or it's not shrinking but it's growing more slowly than it has before so labor force participation is down it's skills mismatch yeah. you we've got to convince people that they want to work in construction and train them to be able to do it so it a little bit more than a secular maybe it's not a full-on secular trend but it's definitely a longer than a typical this cycle yeah i i totally agree with it I, I, we're in a very strange place we have um if you look at the labor force the participates going rate is going down but while that's happening we also have more people leaving the workforce through retirement than we have new entrants into the workforce so we're actually shrinking the size of the u.s workforce and we're not teaching kids in school the skills that they need to be in something like construction mm -hmm. uh, and we've basically outsourced that labor elsewhere in many respects which may or may not continue to be the trend i I'll, my bet is that uh, a smaller construction workforce is a secular trend in our country is, are, is somebody trying to fix it when you're talking to the folks? It's I, I think staying it, out of politics, yeah. all right? I know where you're headed, Mr. Bull, okay? But forget about immigration policy and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think we have to fix something in the educational system in okay. our country where right. we actually teach those skills in schools. All right, stay with us. We're going to have a big one. Affordability is next. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Hey there, thanks for checking out the Commercial Real Estate Show. Don't miss a video of special interest to you. Be sure to subscribe below. And if you appreciate the videos, be sure and thank our sponsors. There's a link to more information about them in the description. For more videos, podcasts, and articles, check out CREshow.com.